Too Naked to Hide by Nina J. Kors Chapter 19 Night Deep into the Dark He was on the sofa, sitting up, completely drenched in sweat. An ambulance was driving by with sirens at full blare below his window. Everything in his apartment was static and quiet and silent. He touched his face. There was no Dutch tape holding his mouth shut, no cut in his tongue, no fly off the ledge. He looked at his hands, free, white, clean. His heart raced. He took long, quivering breaths. He felt uh, the sweat uh, drying up in his back, slowly. His heart started to slow down. The newspaper laid on the ground. The beer bottle had toppled over the carpet. He sat still, dazed, frozen. An uh, unknown measure of time went by before the idea dawned in his mind. He got up, took his computer from his bag and opened it on the table. He looked in his bag for the internet connection key. His hands were faintly shaking. The computer lit on. A nice bright navy blue glow. He clicked on the Firefox icon, then Google, and finally clicked on Gmail. I hope she didn't change the password. The Gmail appeared. He inserted her name in the username window. Before entering the password, uh, he hesitated. I hope she didn't change it. He typed in the password, verselessness of even numbers. There was a moment of wait. The mouse indicator wheeled on the screen. Error. Invalid username or password. Check if username and password are correct. Shit, shit, shit. She changed the password. He thought uh, about what to do. Then he tried again, slower now, typing carefully any letter, verselessness of even numbers. Again, the wheel wheeled on the screen. His heart started racing again. The page loaded. The image on the screen changed. He was in the account she had created for them. The account was pretty much empty. Everything that had been kept there had been removed, taken off, eliminated. Only her poems survived. The poems she had written for him. And then one email dating a couple of days earlier. He clicked on it. The page loaded. He breathed in and started to read. Dead of the night. Hello, Jacopo. Hello. Would you look at what I have to resort to? What? Do you know I can't go on without talking to you? I miss you. Ah, uh, I miss you too. Liar. You're a liar. Well, it seems to be a shared opinion. I need to talk to you, Jacopo. So? And I'm making up this conversation, a possible conversation, or an impossible conversation, not sure. A real conversation, honey. I'm here. The things I do to survive. I am here now. I'm listening. How are you? Bad. I want to tell you about something. I'm listening. With you. I felt like a small boat, an ancient boat, a sailboat, nice and rounded, all made of wood, glistening in the sun. The sea was clear, bright, my sail white and swallowed by the wind. I was quite a sight to behold. My boat sailed next to yours, almost by chance. We sailed off together to unknown harbors. But you, without me knowing, you had stacked my hold. I met you inside a Phoenician harbor. Remember? 
you had decided to fill my hold with treasures. And the more you stuck at me with beautiful things, the brighter I was. Then, in a sunny afternoon, under a clear blue sky, we decided to sail off, and so, side by side, we left. Me, with my splendid boat, my polished wood, you, with your larger boat, gently sailing by, making the water lap below us. And the water gargling under the keel was accompanied by a beetle fathery wind. We laughed, but didn't know our destination. We only knew to sail into the open sea in search of more treasures to store into our holds. We traveled side by side. The sun was our friend. The wind gently filled our sails and we drift away, placid and serene. It was a moment filled with grace for us. We realized we could make it together in the open seas, alongside, like that. You were large and stately, confident and protective. I was small and lissom, ready to coast around you, swift and nimble, set off behind leaping dolphins, tickle your keel, low and glide away cheerful over the water. And now, how do you feel now? Now I try to survive. The storm has come, violent, persistent, voracious, implacable. You got scared and head back. You lowered your sail, that's what you do when there's a storm at sea. You were an expert in open sea navigation. I wasn't. It was my first time. A huge, devastating wave came and pulled me away from you. I could see you, still, but you were trying to secure your deck to keep the boat afloat. I saw you throw our treasures to the sea. The treasures I had filled you with... I saw you did that to keep afloat, to be lighter. Oh, you were an expert seaman, and through the waves you let the wind take you, going leeward without fighting against it. Sailing into the eye of the wind can mean death, you thought. This is what life has taught to you. Do not sail against an adverse wind. Ride the waves. Weather the storm, focusing only on the safety of your boat. But to do that, you had to let go. You couldn't take care of me, too. Your life was on the line, against mine. You let me go alone, certain it was the right thing for me. You unfastened the mooring rope that cut me tired to you and sailed off. And you, how did you manage? I lowered uh, my sails, like I saw you do. I let myself uh, go adrift, giving in to the gale, like you had done. I hoped that you would come closer, sooner or later, to give me a word uh, of advice, a voice. I didn't know exactly what to do. I've never been good at planning my life. I acted out of instinct. But the waves were so big for me, too big. They slammed me back and forth. They had broken into my hold. They were trying to steal my treasures away. I didn't worry about my boat. I let go of the helm and descended into the hold to save my treasures. I thought that without them my boat would sink. I would have no purpose to be. My treasures were well anchored to the hold. I protected them even more. Sometimes I went out uh, to the deck when I thought that uh, the storm was waning. But as soon as I stepped out, Fierce gusts of wind would strike me down. The sky was black and the rain pured over me. So 
I'd come down to check my trousers, and sometimes I'd climb up to take the helm back in my hands, but I didn't know where to direct my vessel. The waves have beaten against my boat and opened gaping holes. I tried, like you, to survive. The sea was so violent. I thought that maybe, small as I was, I could make it through. Sometimes I was tempted to abandon the ship, leave everything behind, let others take care of my boat. I wasn't brave enough to do that. And uh, at one point I thought I could hold on the helm and give a course to my small vessel. And suddenly a large ship flanked me, slow, squared, with her lows, her love for me, with my children. She tried to convince me she was, against every appearance, small and swift. She convinced me she could help me out. She convinced me it was the only way to weather the storm. I tried to resist, to sail it alone. But the ship was at times docile and soft, while often in her attempt to save me from the waves, she thwarted my efforts even more. Her wake thirsted in over me the same waves that had shattered my bull, and they would come back as fierce as ever, washing over my cracked keel. The sky remained dark. The waves kept towering above me. The rain kept pouring violently down. I had lost my bearing. There were no landmarks. You were not aware anymore, swallowed in the darkness of the storm. The other landmarks I had looked at too had disappeared or even turned against me. My friends, my job, the relationships I had nourished through the years, my parents, everything gone darkened by clouds, everything against me. And everyone was right, and everyone told me I was wrong. The fact alone that you had slipped the line gave them reason to be right. Before me only the large, colossal ship, reliable, confident in her strengths, and still unwavering and full of love. For me. Tell me, I know already, but tell me what you did then. <laughs> I waited. I sat down in the hold. I looked over my treasures, the ones you had given me. I saw that I had kept them well. They were all intact. I thought of you, of your empty hold, your loneliness, your fear, I took it in. I took your fear with all my strength. I took it and closed it in a treasure chest, the heaviest I had. I put it in there. I tied it down. I locked it in there. Now it's mine. Your loneliness is mine. Your fear is mine. I know what it means to be afraid. I know. In this huge storm, I was never truly afraid. But I knew you were. You were not ready. You could not come to take me with you. I didn't fight against it. My hold is still full of treasures, you know. I couldn't make you do anything. I couldn't force you. My days with you had taught me you had to be let free to choose. So I did something. In the middle of the storm, I built a false bottom in the hull of my vessel with the broken beams of the keel and the shattered shafts of the sails, I built a cover. I closed my treasures all in there. When I was certain everything was securely wrapped, I went out on the deck and again for a second I hoped for the gale to have subsided, for the storm to have passed. I thought 
that maybe I still had some time to fix my boat, to mend the damages before taking the helm back in my hands. But it was no longer possible. The large ship came alongside and threatened to crush me. She would wedge me in, send me away from my things, size me away from my own vessel. I felt afraid I would be lost. The large ship was looking for safety, too. The ship had also fought against the storm in the darkness, in the midst of violent rain and an unsteady sea. She felt the desire to run off, but I knew she loved me and couldn't do without me. I had changed, but she had stayed the same, stable and reliable, and she loved me. I knew I owed her much. Under the cloak of darkness, relying on the absolute lack of any help from anybody around me, one night she snapped my last standing mast. Then I gave in. I had no more strength. I was defeated. I took the line as she threw me and tied it to my boat. The ship walked down to the hold, but found nothing of value. I spent my time on the deck, alone, always alone, looking upwards, towards stability, towards the serenity of my children. At the end, he saw you weren't there anymore, thought that my hold was really empty and that my decision was firm. He thought he had won. For a while, that's what he thought. But he was never totally uncertain about it. The large ship observes me, probes me, endures her pain. I took hold of the line, like I said, and I tied it to my boat. Now the large ship pulls me to forward. Every once in a while she yanks me, and I can't do anything but being yanked forward. She doesn't do it to hurt me. She fights with the weapons she has. It is the weapons I had looked for in her, the things I had hoped to get from that ship when I had climbed aboard her a long, long time ago. Now, I try to repair my damages. I try, where possible, to fix what the storm destroyed. But she has her rules, her principles. I am the one who wanted to sail off without her. No, more. I am the one who slipped the moorings, who sailed away, happy and serene, who defied the laws imposed on the small boats like me. I am the one that left to discover the world, to fill a hold with treasures. I am the one who decided not to sail alongside her any longer. I am the one who changed. I am still the one who never repented for what I've done, nor will ever ask for forgiveness. The large ship doesn't think anymore that my hold is empty, but she loves me and does everything she can to fill me with love, and she suffers because of me. My hold is full, full of treasures. If it were really empty, then even my outer shell, my body, would have died. But my hidden hold glistens and vibrates. It sparkles and sings as yours doesn't anymore. How do you spend your days? I look at the days glide by, slowly. Time heals and mends. I see my children and I find consolation. Every day is one more day of serenity for them. I am alone. I don't know what to do. Ah, oh, <laughs> you're not alone. You have me. 
I'm here. I talking to you. Yes, but time will go by. You won't be able to wait for me anymore. You'll learn to hate me. That's what everybody is expecting from us. And maybe we too expect it from us. I have hold filled with you and your treasures. It's something that nobody will ever be able to take away from me. They are all there. They are only waiting for you to come back for them. To share them with me again, if you still want. Oh, honey, I miss you. No, you don't. Jacopo, you do not. Translation from Italian by Iris Cartia. Original music by Massimo Moretti for Maxmore Music. Post-production editing by Gina Lee. All mistakes are mine. If you want to see pictures of making off uh, and life in Italy, please follow me, Nina J. Kors, on Instagram and LinkedIn. Mm-hmm.